Hey everybody, I'm Amanda with DevExpress and welcome to today's webinar, What's New in VCL 17.2, presented by DevExpress CTO Julian Bucknell. In this session, see what's new in our VCL subscription. This session is being recorded and it will be made available on our DevExpress YouTube channel later today. We will also do a live Q&A at the end of this presentation. Just type your questions in the GoToWebinar control panel at any time throughout the broadcast. All right, thank you so much for joining us. I will now hand things over to Julian. Thank you, Amanda, and uh, welcome everybody to what's new in version 17.2 of the DevExpress VCL subscription. I actually uh, got up really early this morning to listen to Embarcadero's, Embarcadero? Embarcadero's What's New in Rad Studio Tokyo 10.2.2. So I'm wide awake, and I wonder if any of my listeners today also saw that same webinar. More on that in a moment. First of all, let's have a quick frequently asked questions section here. When, where, and how, and so when is version 17.2, the VCL, available? It is available right now. It was released, published yesterday morning, so it's been around for a good 24 hours or more. So uh, where do I get it, you may ask? And basically go to devexpress.com and um, you know, go from there, log in, how do I download it? Well, let's let's see that uh, before I go on to which versions of Rad Studio, et cetera, are supported. So how do I download it? First of all, go to devexpress.com. Notice this particular screenshot, I am not logged in. So the very first thing I'm going to do is click on the login in the top right-hand corner there, uh, login, type in, in which case uh, your um, email address and your password and not password one as I've got here and once you hit the login button you'll get back to the main page but notice this time we have a, a welcome banner up here with a nice little link saying download your product so you can just click on the download your products at that particular point and you get to this particular page, the Download Manager. And um, ignore all the fact that I have every single DevExpress product ever made, because I happen to be CTO and all the rest of it. Just scroll down, or maybe not scroll down, and you'll get to the next bit, which has VCL subscription. Drop it down. So um, open it up if you like. And you'll notice it says version 17.2.2, 13th of December, um, because here we are one day later on the 14th of uh, December. And you can select a version that you want to download. Um, one assumes you want to download the latest. Uh, you can either download it as an EXE or as a zip file. Uh, personally, I always do the EXE. I like to be led when I install a product. A uh, couple of things I want to show off before, um, well, I'm not even going to do it because I've already done it. Um, are these two buttons here. The first one is a big button saying major change. This is essentially the list of what's new. If I click this one, I get to the what's new for VCL, which is what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, if, however, I click on the change logs option here, button here, what we're going to get to is a, a fairly new um, site, uh, page, where you can explore uh, what's happened with um, the VCL product line. Um, and you can do things like uh, see what resolved issues have been in a particular uh, version, any known issues in a particular version, and so on. Um, the nice one is the breaking changes. You can select basically, well, I'm going to go to 17.2.2, but I'm going to update from, I don't know, 16.1 something. And if you click on breaking changes, you basically get a list of uh, breaking changes. All I've done with this particular screenshot is to show the breaking changes for 17.2.2. And as you see, there are a whole bunch of them. Whoops. And 
that's basically that's how you download it um, installing it you just run the app um, unless you have the zip file in which case you're on your own because I've never done it and um, that's about it for that particular section. The next thing I wanted to talk about is what is uh, or what versions of Rad Studio do we support? Um, it gets complicated, but strictly speaking, it's Rad Studio 2010 or later. So 17.2 is for Rad Studio 2010 or later. Um, Rich Edit is, as we'll hear in a minute, um, a bit of a loner in a sense. It needs XE Plus, but if you've got 64-bit plus, plus Builder, then you need XE8 Plus. My, my recommendation is update to the latest version. Use RAD Studio Tokyo 10.2. Uh, I, I never go back anymore. There was once a time when I used to you know, get a new machine, and I'd install every single version of Delphi. And then I uh, grew up. Um, Embarcadero are on a very aggressive update cycle, and just so happens that we released our version 17.2 like six hours after they released 10.2.2 Tokyo. And we have not had a real chance to investigate um, any issues that occur with 10.2.2, the very latest uh, Rad Studio Tokyo. And um, however, a um, couple of our customers have already found out problems. And so my recommendation, further recommendation is uh, you can try using version 17.2 with version 10.2.2 Tokyo, but until we release a minor update, uh, you're going to run into problems. And the, the first problem you're going to run into, it won't compile. And um, we know all about that. Um, customer told us yesterday, and um, it happens to be in the rich edit. So please beware. It's nice to have the latest Rad Studio. Sure. Unfortunately, this time around, we've managed to clash with Embarcadero on our release cycle. Um, it was a complete surprise to us that they were going to release yesterday as we were going to release yesterday. So, as I say, we've had no real time to investigate all of the issues that might occur if you try and install in 10.2.2. And um, as I say, we do know of one of them. Um, it won't compile, um, uh, or the rich edit won't compile. Um, so what I've been told by the team is uh, they are going to spend the rest of the week, poor so-and-sos, and, -sos, and um, release a minor release by, say, Tuesday next week, maybe Wednesday, depending on how testing goes and all that kind of stuff. It's a rapid turnaround for us, uh, for the team. Uh, so be aware. Um, yes, Tokyo 10.2.2 is looks cool, um, has some nice features, um, but not necessarily for us right at this very moment. So on to the new features. First, before I jump in with the various demos, let's have a quick overview. Now, we've added one new control in this release, the UI Adorner Manager. This is designed to display objects, user interface, user things <laughs> that you can interact with and apply visual effects to help somehow communicate the state of your application. A couple of ways. First, by it allows you to paint badges on top of your UI. We'll see what that means in a minute. And a second is to create guides to highlight specific UI elements in your um, uh, on your in your window using a semi opaque layered effect. I'll show you what I mean in a moment with the, with the actual demo. Next up, we've added full conditional formatting to our grid like controls. So. Uh, the grid itself, the tree view or tree list, and the vertical grid, which is also known as the property grid. And in essence, what I mean by conditional formatting is 
it's Microsoft Excel-like formatting of individual cells or individual rows or columns based upon some kind of conditions you express through a rules manager. Sounds complicated? Eh, not, not, not really, no. I'll, I'll show you in a moment. Third on my list is actually my most favorite enhancement yet. And it's something that I can't just show you very well on GoToWebinar. It's per monitor DPI awareness. It has to be seen to be believed, but let's see if I can't describe it. So on this Dell laptop I'm using, I have a high res resolution screen, comes with the laptop, and then two, shall we say, normal resolution monitors. So we, I have uh, 3200 by 1800 for the high res screen, and the other two are just 1080p screens including the one you're actually looking at. Now, if I have an app built with DevExpress VCL 17.2 showing on the high res screen, it's on the left as you see it now, and I drag it over to the lower res monitor, the one in the middle, the one you're looking at, our VCL code will A, resize the window, and B, the layout of the contents automatically so it fits the lower res display. Right, so here I have, wait a bit, wait a bit, I have a, a demo, it's the grid demo, and it's roughly a third of the size of my high res screen. Now I'm gonna slowly start dragging it over into the screen that you're looking at. And as you see, it's huge on this lower res screen until I get to a particular point when our VCL code kicks in and resizes it. It's got toolbar, it's got a grid, it's got that lovely uh, navigation bar on the side, and it's just, it just works. The other good thing about it is because we support SVG, all those nice icons there look just right. We don't have to mess around with weird little bitmaps and have you know, a whole array of bitmaps from 16 by 16 to 256 by 256. It just works. This is, as I said, it's the most fabulous thing I've, I've seen in VCL. And uh, we are way ahead here. Let me put it like that. Oh, the same goes for the other way as well. So uh, here the relative size of the window to the screen will be maintained if I drag it back over to my high res um, screen on the side and you've got to be aware you know your developers you have got to be aware that people are no longer just using 1080p type screens they've got higher resolution screens they've you know maybe your users don't but you know maybe your users are starting to get these new bigger screens with higher resolution and they want to be able to use all of that high resolution to be able to you know do their work and use your app this, this whole thing just screams modern, high-quality programming. So you don't have to worry anymore about how your app will look on these modern high-res screens. We've just taken care of it for you. Um, let me drag it over here. There we go. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so next up is uh, yet more modernization of the VCL runtime, uh, or at least our VCL runtime. Sorry about if you're just using ordinary VCL. Uh, Touch-friendly scrolling. Here, if a control requires a scroll bar, it is not shown until the user hovers the mouse over the content, and it is only shown as a shadow with a visible thumb uh, that coincidentally is correctly sized according to the content size. Better seen than described, and we'll see that in a minute. Grid control, a couple of new features, biggest one being fixed data rows. You've used fixed uh, columns before, but we now have fixed rows. And finally, the scheduler control now has a proper outlook, look and feel from Microsoft Office. So without further ado, oh, I forgot this slide. FireMonkey, no, no FireMonkey support in this release. Um, we are very keen on what we're doing with VCL at this point in time. 
We love the fact that this high DPI monitor support works so well. Um, our SVG support, if you actually uh, watch the uh, Embarcadero um, What's New this morning, um, still no SVG there, not even in Rav Studio. I mean, somebody asked about it and they went, yeah, yeah, it'd be a good idea, but I think we can do it in FireMonkey, but we don't have official support. We have SVG support in the VCL subscription right now. And you've seen what it looks like. No jaggies, no weird icons. It's just great. So for the moment, uh, no FireMonkey support. Version 17.2 in action. Let's close that off. And what I'm going to do is, first of all, show you the new UI adorner. So let me just uh, rearrange a few uh, screens here. And the first bit is a demo of a fairly complex form. There's lots of controls. Uh, there's a grid or two, as you can see. Suppose you want to um, explain it to someone, or you want to replicate it. You know, what's being used and where. Certainly you could go to the code and have a look, but I'm going to do something different. I'm going to show the editor names here and let the UI adorner kick in. So I click on that and first notice the adorner has overlaid a semi-opaque shadow over the window with certain fields highlighted in yellow. Now I can click on these various fields to see what they are. Um, so a tooltip get shown. So this is the TCX DBA text edit. This one is a TCX DBI image combo box. Now what, what we've done here is a fairly simple um, explanation to you as a developer, uh, what controls are being used where and you know that kind of thing. But obviously to your end users it'd be nice to have this kind of thing where you say instead of you know first name you actually give them an idea of what to enter there, whether they can enter something or whether they don't have to enter something or something along those lines, some kind of nice uh, visual representation. And the, the data is, I mean, it's just an overlay on top of the, the window. So the, um, the data that's being shown is still the same data and all the rest of it. So that's one angle, if you like, of the, uh, the adorner is the ability to highlight various controls to help guide your users um, through the application, say. And uh, another example is a fairly simple one, again. Um, here, what I'm going to do is show our mail client demo. And here we have a mail client. It's you know, mimicking Outlook. So we have the, uh, the kind of tree navigation thing on the side here. We have a list of emails. We can um, open or you know, drag things bigger and smaller. And this one shows what we call badges against part of the UI. If you look over to the tree on the left, you see there are blue badges against individual uh, mailboxes that show the number of unread emails. So this is just a standard um, navigation tree, but we've overlaid, uh, or the UI adorner has overlaid these numbers against each of these items to show the number of unread emails. More than that, there's a red badge here, the red badge here, that shows the number of urgent unread emails in the currently selected mailbox. And so here we have one, and here it is. So if I read this, what's going to happen is um, the adorner gets notified. Uh, we've gone down to two instead of three, and we no longer have an urgent one because I've read it. So that's the other part of the adorner, is the ability to overlay badges uh, in a translucent way uh, on top of other parts of your UI. Um, the, while I'm here, actually, let's, let's just quickly show off the new scroll bars. You may have noticed as I move my mouse around. Um, so, first of all, I'm hovering over the email list, and notice the, uh, the uh, scroll bar 
gets shown because I'm actually hovering over the uh, list here and I can grab hold of the thumb and drag it up and down. Same with over here. I can drag the thumb and hold it up and down. If you notice, um, the scroll bar is just a shadow, basically. We don't have the up and down arrows at the bottom. So it's, and it's, it's also touch friendly. So if this particular screen were touch sensitive, I could just move the content up and down uh, by grabbing hold of the scroll bar thumb. So that's the, the new scroll bars. Um, instead of the older uh, scroll bar type, or the standard scroll bar type, I suppose. Um, so there we go. That was UI adorners and touch-friendly scroll bars. I'll, I'll show you more scroll bars uh, later on as we go through the, um, the grid. And, um, oh, talking of grids, let's have a look at that. I briefly showed you this uh, particular um, demo as I was dragging it over from my high-res screen to my low-res screen here. So this is the new conditional formatting feature. So we have the grid here showing perhaps a little too much information formatted according to various conditions. Oh, notice the nice scroll bar. And if I click on the Manage Rules button, uh, we can see what rules are set here for this particular grid display. So click on Manage Rules here. We get the Formatting Rules Manager here. So the top five kind of example, which is this one, is fairly obvious. I'm going to just double click it or edit the rule. And so we're formatting only the top and bottom rank values, uh, top five, and so on and so forth. So we can set up a, easily set up rules quickly uh, to show information in the grid. Um, and we can apply formatting to ranges. So we have a data bar. And let's do the icon set, which is kind of fun. What the icon set says basically um, is to you know, have a set of icons and display them according to some rules. Here's another set of icons. And so when the value is greater than 80 or equal to 80, we have an up arrow if it's less than 80 but greater than 60 we have a slightly to the right arrow and so on and so on and so on so we can set up these rules fairly quickly and easily uh, just like in Excel and be able to um, display visual information visual analytic information I suppose to the user who's going to be looking at this grid and trying to understand what's what so that was the conditional formatting for the grid. Um, I can show you the same thing in the tree list, exactly the same way. Here we have a tree list. Uh, it's a bunch of cars um, and oh, different types of vehicles, different types of brands, and um, the, the actual models themselves, and show some kind of information against that. Again, clicking the Manage Rules thing, uh, we see um, some uh, way of altering what the user sees. And the same thing goes for the vertical grid or the property grid, where we, again, have uh, the ability to have conditional formatting against the information that's been displayed in the grid. So let's just move those out of the way again. So we're back to the grid. Now, uh, since we're here, let's take a quick look at the fixed data rows feature. Now, as I hover over these rows, let it um, just update, one assumes. And we're not, oh, there we go. So as I hover over the rows here, what happens is um, a pin gets displayed. And basically, I can click on a pin. Let's click on this one. And a pop-up will appear to say, well, do you want to fix it to the top or do you want to fix it to the bottom? So let's just fix it to the top. And now notice the grid. Um, let's grow this a little bit so we can see more information. So as you can see, this particular row is now fixed at the top of the grid, and the grid 
basically scrolls underneath it. Let's uh, fix one to the bottom. And so now we have the grid in the middle. We have a fixed row at the top. We have a fixed row at the bottom. So as I scroll the grid, these fixed rows stay visible throughout. Now if I click on the pin again, I can unfix it, moves it back to where it was inside the grid, or I can you know, bang it to the bottom or to the top, depending on what we're talking about here. So that's the fixed row feature of the new quantum grid. And let me move that out of the way. Next thing I want to show you is the, well, for the final demo, actually, um, is the new Outlook look and feel for the scheduler. And uh, basically, as I said, we're trying to emulate the uh, user experience from Microsoft Outlook. So one of the things which is um, great in the new Outlook is this ability to Oh my, we are having fun today, is to have a tooltip um, displayed as in the same way as we have for um, um, Outlook. So same things happen as before. You can double click to edit the uh, appointment, uh, just a single click, you'd be able to alter the um, the event, in this particular case, the, uh, the text, the description of the appointment, and like so, and again, oh, we have the scroll bars again. So, tool tips look better, um, and that is pretty much it for the demos that I particularly want to do. And you may be thinking, well, Julian, that was a little um, little quick. And the reason is we've been working on a um, another project which wasn't quite ready for version 17.2. And that was is something that we'll probably be announcing next week. Um, the feeling is that we want uh, to do a, a community technology preview. It might be a closed one, uh, in which case we might invite customers to uh, try the feature out. It's um, still not quite ready. It's, it's pretty good right now, um, but we just need to uh, do some more uh, fixing and uh, documentation so you can understand what the feature does and how it works and so on and so forth. So with that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for uh, joining me here for what's new in VCL 17.2. And Amanda, um, I presume we've had questions in the background. I know the team have been uh, answering them. Uh, so uh, what's new? Uh, we answered a couple. Uh, a couple just popped up, though. Um, one asking if there's a demo with code available for the Adorner feature. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I mean, obviously, the the demos I was showing, uh, you get the source code when you get uh, the VCL subscription, so you can see how the uh, the demos work. I'm told by the team there is a. Um, an example for the adorner, which isn't just part of another, uh, let me see if I can find the reference for it. Uh, da, 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 da. No, I can't see it straight away. So unless the team tell me, There's a new Adorners module in the data editors and controls demo. Let me, I didn't quite see that earlier on. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, just next question. Comment from, from Richard Stevens. He says, oh, come on. Secret features in the VCL coming soon. That's all you're going to give us? I'm going uh -huh. to burn. <laughs> I, you know, what can I say? The team, team said it wasn't ready, and uh, it's not quite ready. I'm... Um, hands are tied. 
<laughs> oh, my hands are tied. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Apart from the hand that has to move the mouse. Yeah, my hands are tied. Um, <laughs> um, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, it's, it's one of those things. So it's one of those things that has to be demonstrated inside Visual inside Visual Studio. It's inside Rad, Rad Studio. So um, I don't have Rad Studio set up here and uh, at this moment, but uh, the next webinar I might have to use some Delphi. Uh, Winter dashboard is coming to VCL. Good question. Good question. Um, one of the things I've said um, over the time is we tend to copy a lot what happens with WinForms, and uh, we, um, you know, WinForms team provides something, and we say, yeah, that would be pretty cool, and um, then we add it to the VCL. Um, in fact, this time around, uh, the opposite happened. Um, the VCL team produced the uh, per monitor DPI, high DPI awareness, and the WinForms team have started to add that to the WinForms product. So, yay, VCL in the forefront here. And um, dashboards, the, the main problem about dashboards is dashboards are a visual way of analyzing data. So we have the grids, we have the pivot grid, we have trees. We don't have charts unless they're attached to a grid. So step one in creating dashboards for VCL is to create a charts module. We've discussed this, uh, the team and I um, have discussed this in the past, and we discussed it on you know, coming up to 17.2. We do have an experimental uh, cough, cough, quote, don't quote me on this, but we have an experimental uh, suite of chart controls. Um, but as I say, to do dashboards, you need, you need charts, and we don't have a separate charts module yet. So uh, step one would be, as I say, create a charts module, and then we can move on and say, okay, we can do the rest now. Hmm, he says, <laughs> not having written anything big in many years. Uh, let's see, let's see. Does the, uh, does the conditional formatting feature work for card view? A good question. Um, hmm. Unless the team has answered that, I don't know. Okay, let's see if they... Let's see if they, they come up, yeah. yeah. Do you know anything about right-to-left support, Julian? Right-to-left support is one of those things which is difficult. And the reason it's difficult is because the code we originally wrote assumed all the way through left to right. And so to go back through all of that code that renders text on the screen to try and work out whether it needs changing to do right to left or or whatever is a huge task. And at that point, it becomes a question of, I mean, just let's be brutal about it. This is going to be a business decision. Can we make a good business um, decision to do right to left with VCL when the VCL code now is nearly 15 years old. Um, no, tell them a lie. What am I talking about? It's nearly 20 years old. Um, and that's that's hard. We, we're trying with, with WinForms, and it's taking a long time. Um, with our web stuff, it's you know, fairly easy because it's up to the browser to display text. And so long as we do the right thing, um, then the browser takes care of the things. But uh, with VCL and WinForms, because the code is so um, um, a traditional, if you like, in scope, um, I, I, I cannot say um, that we're going to be doing it in the next year or two years or whatever. I, it's just a decision we have to make but it's going to take a while to do. That's all I can say. 
Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. <clears throat> uh, Delphi is going fire monkey all the way now. Is there any plan for a fire monkey component suite? We are ready to pay extra for a fire monkey subscription. Um, first thing is, Delphi is not going just fire monkey. I watched the, um, as I said, I watched the presentation this morning from Embarcadero, and they were talking about VCL enhancements. They talk about new panels in VCL and so on and so on and so forth. So they're not giving up VCL for FireMonkey, so I reject that particular assertion. The, the point about FireMonkey is, yes, it would have to be a, a separate product, and to be a separate product would have to, you know, create enough controls in it to make it viable for people to buy. And, um, you know, and then we have the question of, uh, the eternal question of, do we just do desktop, which would be fairly easy, uh, in which case it would be just Windows and Mac, or do we go for mobile, in which case it would be fairly hard, um, because we have no real uh, mobile support with our VCL subscription as it is, so we'd have to be borrowing um, devs from other teams um, to do so. Um, so at the moment, as I say, FireMonkey is uh, not on the table. We're not doing anything for 17.2. We're not doing anything for 18.1 either. Um, so it's just, yep, yeah, we continue to watch um, Embarcadero and what they're doing, and we shall see. Um, from Paul, he says, I like your approach to handling high DPI using SVG graphics more than the FireMonkey approach of multiple sizes of bitmaps. Given this, will you work with the cross VCL people to support DevExpress components so that applications developed with Delphi and DevExpress can be deployed to Mac OS and Linux? That is a very good question. In fact, that's come up a, a couple of times over the past couple of months uh, where people have been asking, yeah, what about CrossVCL? Now, for those people who don't know, what CrossVCL does is to um, basically replace some of the runtime of VCL, uh, especially geared towards um, the display, the user interface, um, to allow you to basically write a VCL app that can then be compiled uh, with cross VCL to produce you know a Mac app or a, a, a Linux app and be able to display it now the thing is that you know with this high DPI awareness we're you know circumventing uh, what's in the VCL already um, and that's going to cause problems with cross VCL um, it's it's one of those things that now we've released version 17.2 uh, one we're going to be talking with the team um, to discuss what we're going to be doing for 18.1 and uh, I don't know whether anyone on the team has actually played around with cross VCL as it stands I know it stands at like version 0.99999 they haven't quite got to version one yet um, so I think we need to do some investigation with about cross VCL. Is it going to be a nice, if you like, a shortcut to be able to produce Mac apps? Um, we'll see. I I really, really don't know. I know about the product, but I just don't know enough about um, what kind of issues there would be. Okay. Uh, some of the newer exporting functionality to Excel, banded exports, master detail sheets, etc strays quite close to reporting. Is this in the future for VCL? I'm not quite sure I understand the question, to be honest. Okay. Uh, hang on a minute, let me... Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Some of you exporting... Functional to Excel. Da, 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 da. Oh, I see what we're saying. I see what we're saying. Reporting. Um, uh, <laughs> this is like, you know, almost a history lesson. <laughs> when we started, there was a charts package that everybody had. So there's no point in creating another charts package. 
And yet here we are thinking, well, you know, dashboards would be good. We need to have a charts package. And reporting is the same thing. There's, you know, Delphi has had report products for forever. And wouldn't it be nice to have a reporting product for Delphi and C++ Builder and have a DevExpress label on it? And I'm just going to say, yeah, would be a nice idea. I think we'll just stop the VCL team having weekends off. <laughs> um, Alexander did say, he says, we do have a reporting component yeah. shipped with a spreadsheet. That's true. That's true. You basically design your report in the spreadsheet. I'd forgotten. Thanks, Alex. Um, you design the report in inside the spreadsheet as you would in Excel, and then you can print that report. And there is support for, um, you know, uh, substitution of uh, data from another spreadsheet and, and so on and so forth, the mail merge type facility and so on. So take a look at that. Um, but having a, a separate report product, um, we got a lot of things to do for VCL, let's put it like that. <laughs> We've got to get the priority right. Uh, just a, just a clarification it's called the TDX spreadsheet report designer okay, okay. Um, okay let's see a lot of questions to get through here let's see um, oh. can I how can I have the rich edit control functionality in a grid row I need to be able to have a hyperlink with a different viewable text from the underlying URL? Uh, that's, a, that's a support question. I can't answer that on. No, nah, no. <laughs> what? I just wish. <laughs> um, does Dev we get this question a lot, which is why I'm going to uh, read it out. Does DevExpress offer consulting services to review nope. a Delphi application? No, we do not. We've we talked about this, um, if you like, globally, as, as it were. Should we uh, be able to give our customers, no matter what um, platform they're using, what suite they're using, or DevExpress is some kind of consultancy? And we've talked about it. It's it would require setting up a whole new team, and you know, uh, it's. It would be nice, but it's just not going to happen, I'm afraid. It it really is. We're, we're great at producing suites. We're great at supporting those suites, at documenting those suites, and all these controls and frameworks and what have you. But um, consultancy, no. Um, unfortunately not. We did, at one point, um, see, that, that was the other thing. We At one point, we thought about, hey, well, how about you know us maintaining a list of consultants which know um, DevExpress products. And there we run into the issue of, well, how do we know they're any good at what they do? That means we've got to have some kind of interview process. We've got to see what kind of work they do. And that has to be maintained through the years. And so that fell by the wayside too. So unfortunately, no, we don't have any type of uh, consultancy or contracting or um, along those lines. Uh, what about training, Julian? Have we ever, we've, we've never really done a VCL. Training? No, we haven't done it for VCL. Um, we've done an experiment with WinForms and WPF and ASP.NET, and um, originally they were um, live presentations, and um, our training guy, Oliver, would go around the world and, you know, do these presentations. The problem is, is we don't have a training um, team. We did produce um, video um, courses as well. Um, but uh, VCL, no, we haven't actually done that. And um, that's not on the list, I'm afraid. It's a good idea. I'm not going to argue the fact. Um, maybe we should revisit it in 2018. Yeah. Um, I don't, I'm going to butcher this because I don't know what this is. But I was asking about <laughs> <laughs> any plans for Unigui components? Would that be right? I've, I I can see that question, and I 
Unigui. 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 No, Unigui. I've Unigui. never. Okay. Dominique, I've I've never heard of them. I'm afraid, so um, no idea. You've never heard of them either. No, I have not. No. Okay. I'd have to bring up a a browser and have a look. <laughs> Um, web dev components for Delphi. That's what they are. <laughs> oh, see. Um, no plans whatsoever. We, uh, to be honest, for the web, we have a surplus of suites. Um, we have ASP.NET, we have ASP.NET MVC, we have ASP.NET Core, we have Dev Extreme, we have Bootstrap, Bootstrap support across all of those. And our problem tends to be, you know, um, telling people or informing people or helping people decide which particular web platform they should go for. And to be honest, Web and Delphi um, are just not going to happen. All right, I think um, Peter says it has to be said. Dev Express makes me look like a genius. Thanks to all who <laughs> hit the base. Fantastic. That's what we like to hear. By the way, if any of you um, listening today or you know watching the YouTube uh, later on have any questions, please, please, please do either you know write to support at devexpress.com maybe we can help you uh, maybe there's something we have a workaround for or write to me if you have some feedback about you know you really 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 want feature x um, you know please you know here's my situation and let me know of what you're trying to do and how you're trying to do it right now and um, you know i can go back to the team and say look you know so and so's got a, a really good um, idea here. What what can we do that maybe get part of the way there, or maybe we do something completely different and do it all, or whatever it happens to be. We do, we just need feedback. You know, we're old style Delphi developers. I've been doing Delphi since Delphi one, um, as many of you know. I I started at Turbo Power, and um, you know I still have Delphi on my machine it's on a virtual machine now but we're still Delphi people at heart so let us know give us some feedback julianb at devexpress.com um, doesn't the VCL yes the VCL subscription yeah the VCL subscription the whole thing does include our ASP.NET web forms controls yes we produce a uh, specific suite for that. And that goes back, again, lots of history back there, um, 15 years ago, whatever it was. Um, so yes, we do supply that, but it's not the whole suite. It doesn't include reporting, for example, or dashboards or anything like that. So if you do want to do ASP.NET, uh, my advice is um, you know, go for the whole suite. Yes, you get some of the controls, uh, a nice selection of them, including the grid and everything, but you don't get it all. Um, all right, let's see, uh, SM, SMPTP component would be a nice addition, comment mm. from Peter. Yeah. Um, Dominique, I'll have a look at Unigui. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> fixed data rows, fixed data rows. Um, as far as I understand, the fixed data rows are fixed in the order you fix them. So you can't then say, well, I want my fixed data rows to be sorted in a, another order. Now I fixed them. Yeah, that's from Philip. Okay, I think that's pretty much it as far yeah. as I can see. <clears throat> Sorry, I just was typing a response there. Uh, oh, okay. All right, perfect. Uh, Vladimir says DevX has uh, a fantastic support. Thanks very much. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Vladimir. Thank you. All right. Um, well, thank you, everybody, for all of those questions and for being here today. Like I mentioned before, today's webinar will be made available later on our DevExpress YouTube channel. And also, you'll get a follow-up email with a link to that as well. And that is it for this one. Thank you so much to Julian. Thank you so much to the team. Thank you all for joining us. And of course, thank you for choosing DevExpress.
Bye-bye.